My first impression on meeting Sofia Gubaidulina was rather disconcerting. She seemed to have the face of a fierce Russian icon, but with the young Judy Garland's hairstyle. However, I soon found out that the icon was the real truth. She described very clearly to me how the ugliness of the surroundings that she grew up in forced her to look up into the sky for her inspiration. Her wish to explore all the advanced Western techniques of music that were banned in Russia and to express the even more banned religious beliefs at the center of her heart marked her out for struggle. When Shostakovich met her, he saw this immediately, and he said to her, Don't be afraid of being yourself. My wish for you is that you should continue on your own incorrect way. She has regarded this comment as her watchword ever since. While surviving by writing film music, she cut her own experimental path in improvising and working with unusual folk instruments from her own region, like the Bayan, a Russian relative of our own accordion. Typically, when she uses the Bayan, it sounds nothing like an accordion. She uses it to make otherworldly sounds and sometimes she even claims that it's meant to represent the voice of God. И я его воспринимала как второго отца, это еврейская кровь. Значит, у меня педагоги самые важные евреи. И духовная пища от немецкой культуры. Despite the straitjacket of repression, Gubaidulina's interest in religion, in mystical experience, and in all the ancient traditions of her country have allowed her to find her own voice. A beautiful sound unfamiliar to Western experience. In Zeitgestalten, or time cycles, she said she wanted to flesh out her feeling that time was not only linear, but somehow vertical, stacked up. In the third movement that we play here, we're in the crux of this tension, like in some great storm. Throughout the piece, one of the most striking sounds is the noise of the two bass guitars. She told me that she'd had a nightmare vision of apartment life, in which the only way you could tell you even had neighbours was by hearing the non-stop boom of stereo bass lines through the floorboards. Then she looked at me with a strange smile and said, maybe if you lifted up a floorboard, you would find it wasn't an apartment at all, but hell.
In a dangerous world, secrets abound. And sometimes to survive, artists had to create a self-sufficient universe. The Hungarian composer, Gyurgy Kurtag, shows us another way of expressing experience. His music sounds as if all the notes had to be compressed to fit into a small box full of secrets, as though everything had been boiled down to its essence and hidden. He hints at Wagnerian proportions using Webern's tiny language, and the story he tells is as bleak as it is passionate. Underpinning the whole piece are repeated guitar chords, starting with unadorned open strings. At the very beginning, they're just presented simply. However, as the piece moves on, it becomes obvious that these chords mean something much more important. It's as if they define a journey, the point where we start off from and the point that we will eventually return to. Moving and altering like a vessel in a sea of memories. Beckett again. Thank you. 